Well, we're joined now by Spain's Foreign Minister, José Manuel Álvarez. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure having you with us on Al Jazeera. What in concrete terms does Spain recognize a Palestinian state entail? We have recognized the state of Palestine as a full nation among the international community uh, with all the rights that give to statehood uh, international law. And of course, this is the first step. Next, we have uh, uh, to put in place a real and valuable Palestinian state that will have uh, uh, Gaza and the West Bank and the one single Palestinian authority that will have continuity of the territory and therefore connected by a corridor with an exit to the sea and a port in Gaza and the capital in East Jerusalem. And above all, we have all to join forces to bring this peace conference, to bring peace for everyone in the Middle East. So the recognition today is for justice for the Palestinian people. They uh, cannot be condemned to be eternally uh, refugee people for peace in the Middle East for everyone, okay. including the people of Israel and also out of pure humanity. Fine words, uh, Foreign Minister, but some would argue this is largely symbolic because it won't change the reality on the ground. Israel continues to flout the International Court of Justice rulings on halting those attacks on Rafah. Even in the last few hours, we've been talking about it this, today, we've heard that 21 people have been killed by Israeli bombs targeting tents of displaced people. How is this recognition of the state of Palestine going to end the hell that people in Rafah are experiencing right now? There are three things. First, it's not the same thing to sit around the table when you're a sovereign state negotiating with another sovereign state. And that's why the recognition of the state of Palestine is important. Secondly, is what the Palestinian National Authority has been asking us for. Our Palestinian friend has told us it is important for us. And third, of course, this thing isolated will not bring by itself peace, but it's the beginning of a process. That's why yesterday, in the Foreign Affairs Council of the European Union, we have decided by unanimity to use the Council of Association between the EU and Israel to invite our Israeli colleague to come to explain us what is happening in uh, Gaza and why he's not abiding by the International Court of Justice ruling that says that the attack on Rafah and the military operation must stop immediately, something that Spain has been asking for months. And, and what did he say in response? How are you going to enforce uh, any of the decisions that are being made uh, to make the Israelis stop doing what they're doing in Rafah? We all decided yesterday, the 27th, with the high representative, that we will invite him. We have to wait for the response. It was a decision that was taken yesterday and is being conveyed now by the high representative. And if they don't want to obey and enforce what's a compulsory ruling of the ICG, it's not a choice. It's compulsory. It's a body, a founding body of the United Nations Charter. Then we took the decision yesterday to analyze the measure that will be presented to I by the high representative, Joseph Borrell, to help ICG to enforce those measures. The Spanish government has said that it will push for a two-state solution. How exactly will you do this, given, as you know, illegal Israeli settlements continue to expand and encroach on Palestinian territory? And, of course, we hear daily about raids on various towns and cities in the occupied West Bank. The illegal settlements that Israel is pushing in the West Bank goes against international law, and they have been condemned by everyone in the EU and in the United Nations. That's why also we have imposed sanctions to violent settlers, both bilaterally from Spain and also with the other 26 at an EU level. But more broadly, we have put on the table 
the idea of a peace conference, a peace conference that has been backed already by everyone in the EU, by everyone in the Arab League, and also by the Islamic Cooperation Organization. Tomorrow, the Secretary General and five ministers of foreign affairs will be here from, from the Arab countries, will be here in Madrid, including the Prime Minister of, of Palestine. We will continue discussing with them, as we did in Brussels on Monday, how to join forces for peace. And this peace conference cannot be like in Madrid in 91 or in Oslo about parameters. And we all know what we have to do. It's time not to talk about the two-state solution, but about the implementation of the two-state solution. And as soon as peace goes back to Gaza, we have to join forces to put under one single authority, the West Bank and Gaza, and we will have to do a massive plan of reconstruction for Gaza as well. Uh, you, Foreign Minister, you've mentioned a number of times joining forces. As you know, uh, more than anyone, European countries are very divided on the issue of Palestine. Uh, so what role is Spain actually playing in bringing them together uh, to deal with this issue? We are playing clearly a, a leading role uh, on different topics. When we started to put them on the table of the European Union, Union we were fairly isolated to, together with Ireland and some other countries. When we said that we had to increase our development cooperation with Palestine, and then the others follows. When we said that we could not stop funding of UNRWA, but even we would increase it, we have done it by 35 million, we were fairly alone and more and more countries and they are the same for the sanctions on violent settlers. It took us a time to get unanimity and for recognition I'm sure it will be the same. We have done it together with Ireland in the EU and Norway, another European country. On Thursday it will be Slovenia, other countries will follow. So we are leading and we are uh, putting on the table the different measures that sometimes it takes a couple of months for others to follow. I appreciate your time, Jose Manuel Alvarez, uh, Spain, uh, Foreign Minister of Spain. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.